like a lot was made of premature balding. I mean, you've you've had that situation in your life. For me, it was like a like a pianist losing his fingers at 1920. It's devastating. The role that I wanted to instinctively play was Amir's role. I mean, you don't have to be a you know Hrithik Roshan or a Govinda or a, a Tiger or a Prabhu Deva to be able to dance. I always have a, a complaint against uh, stages that my performance is not recorded. Hmm. I don't like that. Hello and welcome to Sit with Hitlist, our unscripted podcast plus print series where we feature the finest talents in Bollywood for sure. Well, the guest today has probably the most successful uh, initials you'll come across in Bollywood. It starts with, uh, you know, AK being Anil Kapoor, uh, who's been a co-actor of the person I'm with. Uh, then it gets on to Amir Khan. He's been a co-actor also, the person I'm with. Then it gets on to Akshay Kumar. Well, the youngest of the AKs, Akshay Khanna. Thank you so much for making time, Akshay. My pleasure. You know, I'd be very honest with you here because one of the reasons why this podcast works is because whoever comes here, you know, they really sort of become candid and, you know, they sort of talk about their lives and everything. So it's only fair that I should be honest with you to start with. I was extremely apprehensive before this interview began for two reasons. One is that you yourself have told the world that you hate being in interviews that you don't like being in the press. There's almost like a phobia, like, like people fear dogs. So, you know, you fear interviews. It's very much like that. Right? Yeah. Second, I was also excited. Except I don't physically behave like that. Okay. No, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's there in my heart. Right, right. right. But it, I can't feel it yet. So far, so good. But the good part of it is that I was looking you up online, like really chero the internet across, channeled the internet across and there's such little material on you that anything that you say today would be the first time I'll be hearing it. Good. Great, no? So I'm going to start with the most obvious thing, which is your name itself. Okay. Akshay with an E, you're the only one, when I googled, you're the only person who shows up with the E in the end. You know, I had asked my father this many times hmm. as to why my name was spelled the way it was spelled and there was a specific reason that he had given me. Uh, and he gave it to me on two or three occasions. Okay. And I can't remember. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah. So, my mom's gone as well, my dad's gone as well, so I really don't know who else to ask right so now. The mystery around your name still persists. But there was a very uh, logical and very, it was got nothing to do with uh, astrology or okay. numerology or anything. It's my birth name. Right, right. So, That's your name on the passport. Yeah. So, but there was, there was a specific reason and it does mean something that A-K-S-H-A-Y does not. Oh, really? I think so. Okay. I think so. But we'll have to Google that. No, well, we'll find nothing in Google. You know? No, okay. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. No, I mean, you know, because there could be this thing about, say, there's already Naksha Kumar, because when you were starting out, there was already somebody no, that's with the saying. same it's, first it's, name. It's, 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 it's on my birth certificate. There's no uh, juggling or changing of name or changing of spelling or anything. Like that. That's my name. Like, even something as simple as, where do you live, Akshay? Like, which part of Bombay do you live? Like. Everyone knows where most movie stars live, but we sort of have a clue that you're in South Bombay, but not specifically where. For the person who has so many fans... I live on Malabar Hill. On Malabar Hill. Yeah, yeah. And you've lived in Malabar Hill while being in the movies. All my life, all my life. And you would be perhaps the only one in the movie industry who does not live where the movie industry is. Even if my father's generation lived uh, in, south, in, in the south of Bombay, which was like uh, Shashi Kapoor, Shami right. Kapoor. Sunil Shetty still lives there. That's true, that's one. And uh, so there were quite a few, uh, but not many. I suppose the commute is, is the reason. Right. Yeah. No, because in your father's generation, the movie industry was in South Bombay for, the, for, for a good part. Like, no, you know, I don't think like so. Like famous studio and stuff like that going further south. I mean, say Rajshri's are still in Prabhadevi. Yeah. Just to give, let the viewers know uh, the difference between South Bombay, for those who are not from Bombay, South Bombay and North Bombay are two different cities altogether. Like it takes about a commute of about two hours. But now, now with the with the sea link, you're there like in, in 15 minutes. Right. And a couple of years, once the coastal road comes up, there won't be any real distinction in terms of, you know, different part of town, different right. part of town. Right. It'll all be really easy to commute. I don't know how many people know this because I certainly don't. Which school did you go to? I went to Bombay International School, okay. which is in Babulnath. Mm. And uh, then I went to HR College mm. for a year and I flunked. Mm. And then my parents sent me to boarding school, mm. to Uti. So this is uh, high school, 11th, 12th? 11th, 12th. Yeah, junior college. Junior college. Right. 
and I finished my 12th in Lawrence School in Uti and then I started working. I'm not very well educated or I wasn't very focused on academics acad in general. Uh, academics, no. But was sports your thing? Oh uh, yeah, I was a, I was a, I was a good sportsman. Oh, mm. I always was, uh, always did well in sports, but not academics, no. Right. You know, a lot of people we speak to in the films, they always make it seem like what they're doing now was an accident. That's not something they always thought of. You're the only person I've come across who says that when you were a teenager, you knew you wanted to be a movie star. Oh, much before then. Much before teenage. Yeah, yeah. Always. I always knew that this, this is what I wanted to do. But more than what I wanted to do, it was more of what I could do. Hmm. I never saw myself being able to do anything else other than be an actor. And where did you find that out from? Being on stage perhaps in school when you did plays and stuff or? I think it was more uh, observing my father okay. uh, because I spent a lot of time with him as a, as a kid uh, going to work with him. Hmm. You'd go on sets? Uh, yeah, a okay. lot. I think that influenced me a lot. I did a little bit of stuff on stage in school, amateur stuff. Hmm. And I'm not a fan of stage. Okay. I don't like it. I have stage fright and I had it even then. Hmm. Somehow I always felt that this was the right fit for me. Is that something that, you know, those who've grown up, kids who've grown up with films being around, who've actually been to sets, is that a very natural advantage that someone would have? Because the first time you face the camera, you've actually been in that environment for far too long. Like this whole, you know, this whole nepotism argument that came along. But I don't think it's a natural advantage, right? I, do, I don't think uh, anything can prepare you for facing the camera for the first time. Mm -hmm. But I do agree with you that you do get, it's like coming to an office. Right. Like sometimes coming to a corporate environment can be kind of intimidating mm. for me mm. or for someone who's not used to that environment. Mm. So it's just a different environment that as human beings we get used to, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Further than that, does it have any other advantages? I'm not sure. But as an actor, uh, since you were sure that that's what you're going to be, you're going to be in the movies. Was it the same with your brother, by the way? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. You I never know. asked him? Like you guys have grown up together, you would know what his... I haven't asked him that specific like. question, no. Hmm. I haven't asked him that specific question. But it would probably be similar. I don't okay. know, but I can't, I can't answer for him. I'll tell you why, because you know, we got to know him as the face of MTV. Yeah. When MTV just, you know, yeah. reached India, India was opening up. And he was that first face in that sense yeah. of what we saw as Western entertainment or music videos. We'd never seen music videos before, yeah. before that in any case. Which is a very different kind of beginning. Uh, for a person to be in show business than yours, which was like a hardcore Himalaya Putra, the yeah, that it should was. follow box office, it, it that was. kind of situation. Yeah, but the entertainment industry is, is, I mean, is a funny industry in terms of you can start off as something and end up doing something totally different within the same industry. Right. Like there's so many people who wanted to be directors, ended up being actors or, right. you know, other things, right, right. you know have wanted to be actors but then have found say maybe a love for cinematography or mm -hmm. for editing or for sound design I don't know or direction or direction right. you know. so it, it is that kind of a field it is that kind of a place where you know you want to be in that environment but you don't know exactly what you want to do right. so you find your place eventually but you were very clear it's going I to was. be the, the leading man the, the Bollywood hero. I was it, it's unusual for me to be clear about anything but I've been clear about that for a very long time right yeah and how did you go about it Go about what? Go about like making sure that that first film would be that big film. Like, did you enrolled in, in acting classes, or did you like sort of train I, I yourself in certain I way? I think the first the first uh, hurdle to cross was was telling your parents what you wanted to do. Mm. And I think once I did that, then it was kind of out of my hands because if dad said he wanted to make a film for me, and uh, then then it just out of your hands. So but speak. did you have an idea in terms of how it should be, your first film, at all? So long as you get the job, so long as you play a character, so long as you're the lead, so long as a big film. You know, I've always been very naive in life mm. and I still am very naive. So I don't, I, 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 I'm not able to plan things or to, uh, no, it's not, it's not something that I was able to do then and I don't think I'm able to do it Even now. Even now? So, no, I just go with the flow. But would you not like say maybe train yourself to to pick up better scripts or you know I, I know that you went to a, a training school like an acting school Kishore Namat Kapoor you did you did I join did. the school did, yes yeah, so there's something you were learning there for me I think acting school was was more just about opening up a little bit you know being able to perform 
while you know 10 15 other students are watching you or stuff like that but nothing more than that because you wanted to be a movie star and you knew i didn't say i wanted to be a movie star i wanted to be an actor big difference i've never seen myself as a movie star okay i don't uh, think of myself as one really no that's like saying i i i really wanted to be successful hmm if you're a successful actor then you're a movie star right right, right. if you're not a successful actor then you're it's so, a deeply hierarchical world too. I mean. Yeah, so I never, I can't, I, but honestly, I, I, you know, you're asking me questions about what I thought l a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. It's impossible for me to remember those impossible? things. Impossible? Impossible. Like you wouldn't have like the first memory of a movie you watch and say, hey man, it'd be amazing to be this guy. I mean, we all have our first memories of things that we hold very dear and movies being that for you. I do, but unfortunately, as I told you before, I said my, my memory is so, uh, it's, 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 it's almost scary how really? bad my memory is. It's really scary. I can't remember things. So anything about the past which you, which you asked so, me. So like poor short term memory or poor long term memory? Both. Okay. Both. Just memory in general. Very bad. So if we didn't show you this interview, you wouldn't remember if it happened? Well, if you asked me two years from now what I spoke to you about in this interview, I, I wouldn't remember. But you'd be consistent about it. I mean, it would be what you thought anyway, regardless of whether you remember. I guess. I, <laughs> I would imagine because it's the same person. Right, right. It's just my memory. It, it, it doesn't serve me well, like ever since I was a child. Okay, so you would meet people and there are people you went to school with, college with, no, no, school. No, now, even now. Even now? Even now. So somebody you met and then the same person comes up and says hi and says, like, I would have no clue. Uh, like you I would have no clue who, who that is. Exactly. No clue. It's very embarrassing. It's very bad. But that's just the way it is. And I, I have to deal with it. I just, being apologetic to people right. all the time. But you genuinely would not remember the first day. I'm not faking it. That's no, of course sure. not. Yeah. I'm saying, like, but you know, would you, would, it, would you overcome that for something as big as your first film? For instance, you'll remember that. Yeah, of course. You'll remember, remember your first film. Yeah, but if you ask me, do you remember this particular thing or that, that I won't remember. I'll tell you, like, you know, your first film was a very big deal for me personally, purely because uh, it came out in 1997. 98 is when I went to college, uh, which is St. Stephen's in Delhi. And Himalaya Putra is the first film to be shot in that college. And oh, really? Yes. And you have a song called Bachelor. Yeah. Which is how the movie starts. I mean, your introduction happens with that song. Right. It's entirely shot in that college. Right. Do you remember that college at all? No. Thank you very much. I <laughs> knew that was going to be the answer. <laughs> I don't. I remember shooting other parts of the song which were on a set. And I remember stuff like that, but I don't remember Delhi. Okay. But maybe if I see the song on, on, on screen of or something, course. I'll remember it. But if you ask me without seeing it, then I won't remember it. Right. When we tend to sort of just look up someone online, especially people from the films, uh, a good place to go would obviously be IMDb, because that's where the entire filmography is. And then there'll be like this trivia box there. You know, you'll be surprised, and I don't know if you know this, but you have the longest trivia line. Like the whole, it's like a one and a half pager. And it has so many things. That I thought I'll just first check with you if, if any of these things are true in the first place. Sure. Right? One of the things that the trivia box at, on IMDb says about how Firoz Khan was supposed to uh, launch you in a film called Prema Gun. Then eventually he made that with Fardeen. He was going to make Janishin with you as well, which he eventually again made with Fardeen. True or false? No, he had signed me for a film. Uh Called Janashin. Hmm. I think it wasn't Premagan, it was Janashin. Okay, it was Janashin. Right. And at that time, Fardin had not uh, told his dad that he had wanted to be, he wanted to be an actor. Hmm. Maybe about six, seven months after he had signed me, Fardin told him hmm. that he wanted to be an actor. And so obviously he came to my dad and said, you know, right. my son just told me I'm really sorry, but you know, I'll have to make a film with him instead. Hmm. So yeah, that's true. So he made Premagan. He made Premagan. With him. Yeah. Did you get to watch Janashin? No, Good. I didn't. I didn't. For you. Another one was in 1994, you were supposed to debut with Mukulanand. True? False? I can't remember that. One thing that gets asked, you know, whenever anyone speaks to you, especially in public platforms, one is about where you stay in the sense of how you're in Alibag and that Karan Johar said that if, even if you were getting an Academy Award, you will not, <laughs> you will not leave your house <laughs> in Alibag to pick it up mm. because you don't step out on weekends. Mm. One, is that true? Yeah. You will not? No. I mean, not that we give out Academy Awards, but yeah. but you will not. No, no, I, li I like my weekends at, in Alibag. Second thing that always gets asked is that, you know, why don't we see enough of you? I'm not going to ask you that question purely because of this trivia list where it's incredible the number of films listed here 
which you were supposed to star in and those films got shelved i mean i'm talking about the good ones in the sense that i would have, we would have loved to see this particular film for sure is uh, farhan akhtar directing a film called voice from the sky starring you which got shelved and then he made dawn 2 true true okay what was what what happened there i have no idea we have to ask farhan i think to do an interview with you we should do like a round table no but all it, the people. It, it was, let me ask you <laughs> it was it was, a, it was i remember it was a really good script it was a really good script from whatever i remember he was really excited about the script hmm. and i i don't know why he didn't make it he still hasn't made it right. he still has made it. and right. he really appeared to me uh, at the time very very keen to make it hmm. because i would do anything with farhan hmm. i would do anything with him which is precisely what happened with del chatra would that be correct Would in the mean? sense that you were actually cast for the lead role i mean actually all three are leads but you were cast for amir's role uh, you were going to play akash and you ended up playing siddharth is that true no i was the first person to hear the script out of all the three of us hmm. and when i first read it the role that i wanted to instinctively play was amir's role okay and that's not the role that farhan wanted me to play hmm. and so when i told him that this this was the only one that i was willing to do hmm. i think he was a little disappointed and then he didn't come to me for a while and then he came back to me and said look i mean i know this this is what you wanted to do but this is the role that i've written for you and so will you please consider it again and so i did uh, i heard it again and again and again and again till i was convinced that yeah what farhan was saying was right and mm. i was wrong and so then i did that i mean it does suit better with your personality in the sense of shy reserved that's really who you but play but acting has got nothing to do with your personality right would you would you be more comfortable being that akash from no i would be equally comfortable playing either all mm. all all any of the roles right it's not what i'm comfortable doing i mean mm. if i'm comfortable doing all three what was what was important is is what the director saw me in mm. and i think uh, that choice was far more correct than my choice right. casting is very important right and i think his casting choices were far better than what i had thought of because an act as an actor you're always coming from a point of greed and at that point in time i felt maybe that that character had more flesh on it but i was wrong Do you have memories right. of dal chata or oh yeah very fond course. memories of thank god you remember something <laughs> thank you I have fond, <laughs> but I have fond memories in as much as it was a very happy time in my life. We call it we call it the, the journey, right? Hmm. So what's the journey going to be like? Hmm. Okay, I like the script, I like this, I like that, but what's the journey going to be like? Hmm. So the journey is very important because you spend so much time with this bunch of people, and so if the journey is going to be unpleasant, no matter what the outcome is, hmm. that's always a bummer, right? But if the journey is going to be good, hmm. that's that's a big benefit. So th- that was a great journey. But during that journey, did you get a sense that this is turning out to be what would be quote unquote a turning point for films in a certain way? There's no way of uh, right. I mean, you do get a sense you're working on something that will end up being of a certain quality. But what the destiny of that product is is, is no one's is anyone's guess. Right. right. Amir Khan actually turns up in your life quite often in terms of casting here, of course, because. you know that's the role that you would have loved to play but that's the one that Ahmed played uh, is it true that but not not anymore no of course not yeah. of course not no we loved you in that film everyone did and Thank you. everyone remembers that character so well deepa mehta's film earth were you cast as the main lead and then that didn't work out no so i'm going to make sure that i'm dv removes that yeah okay tare zameen par uh, did amol gupta approach you for the lead character no uh, he didn't uh, he approached amir Uh, because he was a friend of Amir's and said that uh, you know I would really want to narrate this story to Akshay. I don't know him. You've hmm. just worked with him in Dil Chata, hmm. so can you call him and tell him that I want to narrate him a script? So Amir, being Amir, said that you know I can't recommend a script unless I hear it first. Hmm. So make me hear it, and if I like it, I'll tell Akshay. Right. And he liked it so much that he ended up <laughs> doing it. And then one day I was shooting at uh, one of these studios. I don't know, Mehboob, I think it was. and amir was also shooting on one of the floors so i just went to his van to say hi and then he was like oh you know what this happened and i i didn't allow him to come to you i did the film myself so i said okay no problem he didn't just do the film he made his director debut yeah, with that movie yeah i remember <laughs> was that a miss according to you as an actor would no. have satisfied you the i don't think I, i don't think i could have done a better job than amir he was superb so it was good that destiny kind of took him but a lot of people feel apprehensive before approaching you at least they tend to say so in the sense is that that's that's not true you have said no to a lot of 
parts. I mean, of course, now you'll say you won't remember them. Like I know you said no to Kurban, for instance. Yeah, when, so what? When Karajo- I'm saying, do you remember any other parts that we? I mean, just pure trivia for us. Oh, I've said no to a lot of things, but right. I've also said yes to a lot of things that other actors have said no to. Right. So it works both ways. When you read the num- the, the films you've done and the years. The one thing that you notice at least twice or thrice, which is not true for any mainstream, taking big gaps. When you're not acting, are there other interests that you have that you pursue that that keep you busy? No. For any actor, I would imagine, but for me especially, hmm. not working hmm. is the hardest part of being an actor. It is a, for me a very difficult time when I'm not working. It's depression time. So it's not something that I. Uh, seek, look forward to six months off or a year off. It's, I, I'm not like that at all. It's exactly the opposite. But somehow destiny is, has has played its cards in such a way that I've I've taken a, a certain breaks. I mean forced breaks. Okay. Not not by choice. They they never have been by choice and they never will in the future. It's a very hard time mm. when you're not getting uh, material that you connect with for an extended period of time. Right. Yeah, for two three months that's fine. Mm. especially in the hindi film industry mm. because there's such few actors and there's so much work right but there have been those times in my life where i have not connected with anything that i wanted to do how do you overcome that phase you don't you just you go through it right but do you have other interests i know that you play squash a lot yeah but you Billion can't play club. for 3 years no can't play squash every day can't play for 3, three years, years no. right no. so what i mean going to sit and wait like man this sucks or would you watch movies you'd be a movie buff for sure I'm not going to tell you what my day looks like when I'm not working. Right. It's just, it's why? Why would you even want to know? I'm interested to know if there's anything good stuff that you, maybe there are certain actors that you follow and probably learn a lot more no, from no, them. No, no, no. To replenish your, you know, creative. But that I'm doing all the time. You're doing all the, yeah, all the time. That I'm doing all the time. What exactly was the reason why you took a break? I wasn't get, getting material that I liked. Okay. I, I didn't want to do anything that was offered to me. So I decided not to do anything, as opposed to do something that I just, my heart wasn't in it. Simple, not nothing really complicated. You lost your mom last year and the year before that, your dad. But did that have a huge impact on you as a person, like as it would be for anyone? Of course, it would impact right. anyone. Yeah, it's a deeply sad time, very sad time. Everybody has to go through it. Mm. Everybody has to lose their parents at some point in their right. life, and it's always good that it happens that way, not the other way around, where a parent loses a kid. Mm. That would be even worse. So yeah, it's, it's something everybody has to go through, but it's tough. We know nothing about your mother. That's the way she wanted it. That's how she wanted yeah. it? Yeah. Were you close to her? Very. Between mom and dad, who were you closer to? I think I was close to them both, but in different ways. Okay. I would say that I was fortunate that I had a very fulfilling relationship with both my parents. It doesn't really matter which generation you were born in. Like sometimes people say, oh, you know, in the olden generation, especially fathers, mm. they tended to have a very kind of formal relationship right. with their, Amrish with their fathers. children. Right. Amrish Puri kind of yeah. fathers, yeah. I don't think that's necessarily true. I mean, no matter which generation you're a part of, having a good, a uh, solid, fulfilling relationship with your parents is not always very common. I feel very grateful to have had a very uh, fulfilling relationship with both my parents. I mean, your dad was a, I mean, all that we, you know, when he passed away and, and as it is with public persona of, of his stature. But I've always wondered what it would be like to know your dad through your eyes. Is there, is there a side of him that you can sort of dwell on which we may not know? For, I've come across a couple of anecdotes that you've given before. Like there's one lovely one you mentioned about how he went to Latur during the earthquake. Yeah. And he packed his bags for three days and didn't come back for four months. That's true. Yeah. That's the kind of guy he was? I don't know. Somehow I, I'm a little apprehensive about talking about especially people who've been in public life for decades. Mm. If there is a side of them that they have wanted to wanted people to know about, I think that they would have managed that in their own lifetime. True. I don't know if there's any aspect of him or his, uh, his life or whatever that I'd like to throw any light upon, which maybe he didn't. No, I mean, it's all well known. Right. I'm just saying, like, say, for instance, when he was at the peak of his career right. is when he left it all to join Osho. Correct. Right. Now, you were been probably four or five at that time. Five. Five. But did you wonder, like, who is this person that my father's left everything for to go and live in an ashram? Well, one doesn't look at it like that. Okay. Right? As a five year old, one doesn't hmm. uh, articulate it that well hmm. in, your, in one's mind or hmm. whatever. No, I don't think Osho had anything to do with uh, with my thoughts about why my dad wasn't there. Right. 
I, I think that came much later as one grows older, once you know, 14, 15, 16, whatever. Then one starts maybe learning or listening or reading about the person who influenced uh, your father so influenced much, your father so much right. that he decided not only to leave his family, to take sannyas. Sannyas mm -hmm. only doesn't, doesn't really only mean taking your, uh, leaving your family. It means uh, giving up your life mm -hmm. in totality. Mm -hmm. Family is a part of your life. Right. So taking up sannyas is a life, uh, life changing decision which he felt that he needed to take at that time. Uh, but as a five-year-old one, is very, it's impossible to understand it. Mm. I can understand it now. You can? Of course. In what sense? In what sense means that something must have moved him so deeply inside that he felt that that kind of decision was worth it mm. for him, which is an incredible, uh, incredibly difficult decision to take for mm. anybody. Right. But especially if you have everything in life, uh, where life doesn't look as though there's much more that you can have. Right, you achieve everything that you possibly can. Right, and then to give it all up, mm. something has to move you very, very uh, mm. basic, a very basic kind of a fault line, earthquake mm. has to happen within oneself for one to make that decision. And then not only make that decision, but also stick by it. You see, one can make the decision and say, oh no, three months doesn't suit me, yeah. let's go back. But that didn't happen with him. I mean, circumstances uh, in America mm. with Osho and with the commune over there, it being disbanded and then, you right. know, having to leave, right. and, uh, friction with the government of mm. the United States. Uh, that was the reason that he came back. Otherwise, the, the plan was never to come back. The plan was to, that's the life I've chosen till the end. And that's, that's a tough one to make. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that he came back purely because of what happened between Osho and the US government. And you read up on Osho after, when you became older? I've read a lot of Osho. I've mm. heard a lot of his discourses mm. and lot, seen hundreds and thousands of videos. With, I love him. Mm. Oh, I you love, do? Oh, I love him, yeah. Like you could join a community? I mean, it still exists. Osho, ashrams are still... I don't know if sannyas is something that I could, I okay. could do. That doesn't mean I can't uh, enjoy his discourses or mm. respect his intellect or his uh, oratory skills or his mm. uh, way of thinking or whatever. I have deep respect for him. Do you also have a similar streak in terms of uh, n not caring so much for the world? I mean, does that come naturally to you too? Who told you that, that I'm taking sannyas doesn't mean... No, I don't mean sannyas. I mean uh, just an independent streak. A lot of people don't have it. A lot of people will fall in line with how the rest of the world functions. That's really what your father did. I mean, he was Bollywood's number one, number two, number three, one of them. And then he said, hey man, I don't need this anymore. Do you feel like that about yourself? No. No, okay. No. Everybody has their own destiny. You don't have to compare me to my father all the time. Sure. Think, you know. was, that, was that an apprehension that you ever had before entering films? Which is? The fact that, you know, you're Vinod Khanna's son and, you know, we've all loved him over years and you will be compared whether you like it or not? I don't remember thinking about it a lot. I don't remember having those fears or those thoughts, no. And I'm not saying it in, a, in, a, in an arrogant way. Right. I'm just saying it never happened to me. I was never fearful of that. Hmm. It's not something I dwelled, on, dwelled upon right. at all. But did you see that happening though, once you did join films? No. It did? No. They took you for who you were? I think so. But I think it happens to most uh, young actors, whether they come from film families or they come from, you know, from, outside the, from outside the industry. I think when an audience accepts, they just accept you for who you are. I don't think that connection, I think that connection is, is overrated. Okay. Even from an audience point of view. I mean, they'll, they'll have that connection mm. in their mind, but I don't think they're accepting you as a face, like an accepted face. Mm. Like, okay, we'll watch this guy. You know, I don't think that's got anything to do with who your father is or who your mother is or who your uncle is. But there's a full movie industry that sort of would want you to say, be the action hero because Vinod Khanna was. Was, was that something that was... That, you know, that somebody would keep in mind offering you a part, for instance, a producer, perhaps? I don't know, because I've been offered very few action films. I always tell my producers, even now, that I'd love to do more action stuff. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I've really done very, very little action in hmm. my career. Hmm. And I've, all, I've always... Border would But that's just, yeah. you know, one or two in a long period right, of time. Right, right, And I don't know, I just, I've always felt that I, I have the, uh, the physicality to be able to do, you know, a, a good action movie. It's one of the genres that has kind of eluded me for a long time. Hmm. I don't know why. But you've actively seeked it. 
Well, I'm not a writer. I, I don't write my own films, so I, I'm not. I've, I've encouraged or I've asked my directors and producers to you know think about it for me, you know, in the future, hmm. write something. For you me. have. Yeah, I have. Right. Of course, right. all the right. time. Right. It's never really come come about as yet. It, I'm right. sure it'll happen in the future. Right. I mean, you've had a good uh, comic phase, for instance. Yeah. Uh, in fact, again, IMDb trivia. Uh, your favorite director is Priya Darshan, correct? Yes. No. Maybe. One of mine. Yeah. One of yours. Yeah. Right. That was a full phase of. Predation comedies, you know that we just saw you was very different from what you'd done before that. Yeah, but he's uh, he. I've done five films with him, I think. Hmm. And uh, if you see with Priyan, he is if he, and Priyan's done, I think close to two hundred movies. I'm sure. Hundred plus for, yeah, sure. for sure. If yeah. you take Malayalam, Tamil, yeah. Hindi, all he's of them, included. I would say hundred plus for right, sure, which right, is right. a very very rare achievement true, for any director. True, true. So he has also tended to work with uh, tended to. Repeatedly work with actors who who he's enjoyed with, working mm, with, mm. whether it's Paresh, whether it's Akshay Kumar, mm. whether it's uh, there are a lot of people like even like even when I was doing Akrosh with him and uh, with Ajay, mm. you know I noticed I, I I always knew I always know when Priyan likes an actor, mm. you know he makes it very obvious that he likes an mm. actor, you know, uh, and I told Ajay I said Ajay you know he's going to definitely offer you a couple of films in the future. So yeah. he did he did work yeah. with uh, Ajay again. So yeah, I have done five films with Priyan, but Priyan has well, he, like he's done thirty films with Mohan Lal. Hmm. You know, so he is one of those directors who likes to repeat his actors. Repeat but you tend actors. to give advice to your co-actors a lot now about the director. No, I'll tell you why because uh, before this we featured uh, Saif Ali Khan, hmm. and I was telling you the story before yeah. we start the interview, and he spoke about how you know you guys were working on race, and uh, you came up and told him that hey Saif, I think you're not being huggy and you know lovey. Towards mm. Abbas Mastan, and maybe you should because you're behaving like a star. I said, "Hey, man, I'm not behaving like a star." So at night he goes to his room and he he watches them, you know, on the floor having their whiskey, uh, you know, in, with chakna and stuff. And he joins them and he's feeling uncomfortable. But that's not, I'm presuming, what he wanted his evening to be. Which is when Abbas Mastan said, "Hey, man, I think you've been asked to do this, and I don't think you need to. Just do your job well, which you are already." You just psyched him out, right? Did I say that to him? I don't know. But that's what he said that you did. Then, then maybe I, I did say it. Yeah, and maybe I did say it. But from whatever I little I can remember, Saif, Abbas Mastan are very, uh, very gentle people. They're very soft-spoken, very, you know, very kind people. Even when they direct you, and even in their personal life, they're very soft. Hmm. And you have to be very soft with them. You know, you are, you can't be loud and aggressive because hmm. then they just they just shut clamp, up. Right. Yeah, they just clamp up. Yeah. And Saif sometimes can be a little, you know, you know how Saif is. So, I must have told him something to that effect. I don't know, but I think they got along fine. I think they got along fine. And uh, after that night, apparently, maybe, maybe, right. yeah. So you have to break the ice with Abbas and Stan a little bit. You worked with them more, more than once. I done four films with them. Four films. There you go. Yeah. Another director or director duo. Yeah. Loves you completely, both of them. Yeah, we have. A, we had a great uh, chemistry. Uh, it's always important to have a good chemistry with your director. It's the most important thing. And when a director finds that in an actor and an actor finds that in a, in a director, it's very uh, compelling. You don't want to uh, lose that chemistry hmm. because it works. I, I've had it with many directors. Like who else? With, I would like to think most, most okay. of them. But that doesn't always necessarily translate into more than one film. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. When you're working together, to have that chemistry and that understanding is very important. What's the correlation between how a film turns out and what the journey was like? Do you think that if the journey has been great, the film would necessarily be great? Has that been your experience personally? No. Say if you work with someone like a Dharmesh Darshan and you did Aapki Khatir, which I remember not to be, I mean, I don't remember it being such a great film. I don't know what you thought of it. Hmm. But would you think the process of it was also like tiring because that's why it showed up on screen like that? There have been very few films where I've really uh, not enjoyed the journey. The ones where the journey hasn't been that pleasant for me, the, the, the outcome of those films has sometimes been very good okay. and sometimes not been so good. So I don't think really one has very much to do with the other. Right. But that would be different from for different people. But there's never been a situation where you've landed up on set and realized that the process is very different from what you'd heard or you'd read in terms of a script and like it's going nowhere. Everyone seems to say that. I mean, Ajay, for instance, believes that on day one itself, he'll know exactly how it's going to be and that he's going to like this or not. 
and it's going to go haywire. He might know what the journey is going to right, be like, right. but he won't know what the outcome is. Sure. Especially not on day one. Right. So you've never had that situation? Oh, I know what the journey is going to be like. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, fadge, phas gaye. Never? That's what I said, very rare. That happens to me very rarely. I spend a lot of time with, the, with, with my director before we go on set. Okay. So I'm very sure there's not going to be any major basic differences between us. Hmm. No surprises. I don't like surprises. And I don't think really anybody likes surprises. Hmm. At least when it comes to working on a movie set. Like not even one bad experience with a director during the making of I have, film? I have, I've okay. had, but very rarely, very right. rarely. Where there have been basic disagreements on a very basic level. Hmm. You know, nothing to do with, uh, how do you say, a particular shot or how I approach a particular scene, but on a very basic level of how are you directing me? How am I receiving your direction? You know what I'm saying? Hmm. Those kind of things that happens very rarely. But it does happen sometimes. You called Gandhi, My Father, your toughest film. Does it still remain your toughest film? Or at least the most important film, actually, once you said. You said it's the most important film of my career. Of course, you don't remember. I'm just saying that you did. Yeah, but you know, one says certain things in, in a certain context, at a, cer in a certain, you know, at a certain point in time. Hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that th that's going to happen. That's going to stay, you know, as the gospel truth for me for the rest of my life. Right. So I may have said a thousand things. I may say things in this interview which you know, a week later I might disagree with. You know, I might say, no, I really didn't mean that. You know, I don't know why I said that, but I said it. So that's fine. <laughs> so I'm not going to stick by everything that I've said. Fair. You just can't deny it because we have it on video. Yeah, that's, that's no problem. <laughs> that's no problem. Was it a tough part though? Was it a tough part for you to play a person who has lived in the shadow of the greatest known Indian and to have very little material to actually base it on in terms of photographs, in terms of, you know, also the story itself. I mean, was it a tough one? Was it? Was it? It was a tough. It okay. was a tough role. It was a tough role. When I say tough, hmm. what I really mean is at the end of, you know, when the director says pack up, hmm. how tired are you feeling? Right. That's how I judge how hmm. tough a role is. If I'm hmm. really exhausted, hmm. day after day after day on the same film, hmm. then it's sapping a lot from you. It's taking a lot right. from you. You know, if you mentally feel exhausted, emotionally exhausted. Right. Right. I view those kind of roles as tough. Hmm. Or having taken a little extra from you, which you might not necessarily have to give to five or ten other films that you've done. Right. That's what I mean. Would Diwangi be one of them? No. Which would be another one that you can remember? Section. Okay. But that primarily not for anything else. It was just that page after page after hmm. page of dialogue. Right. You know, it's just never ending dialogue, right. you know. Right. Or when a character is that verbose. Hmm. So there's not much else you can do as an actor. There are not that many pauses, there are not that many cuts. It's just dialogue after dialogue after dialogue after dialogue. And so that's a completely different kind of a, a experience which I haven't done before as an actor. So that was, that tested me a lot in, on that front. Mm. That aspect of that kind of acting, uh, which is different from doing practically anything else as an actor because you know, a cut or a, a, a pause, or, you know, gives you something else to do. You know, I don't know right. if I'm right. able and to I, explain yeah. it to you. But if it's just dialogue, 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 mm. dialogue, 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 then that's a very different kind of, uh, it's just different uh, to execute. Actually, like when you've been an actor for like 20 plus years, and also when it comes to, I know you don't like that word, but the fact is you're a star and there are certain mannerisms that come with it. With section 375, did you think that you had to like get out of that mold? Because this is very different from what you've done before. Like you said, of course, you can, you can have that smile, which is a very Akshay Khanna smile, but you wouldn't have it here. On the contrary, to, to be able to engage an audience purely through dialogue, hmm. that itself is, uh, is not easy. And it's a combination of how you're directed and how you perform but also the direction side is more is more important and that's why I, I felt very satisfied creatively with the way Ajay directed 375 because to kind of impose direction on an actor when it's really not required hmm. and I think he has a very good sense of when to direct an actor and when to not direct hmm. you know and that's very important so they're different Films, different scenes, different uh, moments you know, require different different things. I don't know if I'm making any sense. No, you are absolutely. 
there is certain things you can do, which frankly, as a viewer, I thought you were the most different in section 375 from, from your other roles. And what is, was it because it was dialogue heavy? So you had to just stick with, with that part in terms of what he's saying, rather than all those things that you otherwise would use to charm an audience. I get what you're saying, but uh, for me, acting has always been only primarily one thing, okay. which is being in the moment. Only the last four or five years, I've been noticing, like we always do photo shoots for, for films, right? Mm. For your poster, for your, right. all your publicity material mm. and all. We do photo shoots, mm. right? I just don't like the quality of photo shoots. Mm. Uh, no matter how good the photographer is, how, much, how good you know, the person in front of the camera is. And a great alternative is today you can, because everything's digital now. Mm. If you remove the frame mm. while the actor is acting, mm. that being in the moment, that mm. doesn't come across in a photo shoot. Right. You understand what I'm saying? I get you. Right. So, if you do a photo shoot mm. of me in the same costume, mm. in the same look, sitting at the same desk, on the same chair, with the same pen in front of you, with the same file mm. in front of you, but it's a photo shoot, right. you'll get a different kind of a picture. Right. So, any actor, if you take out a frame of their scene, mm. okay, mm. you'll always see whether they're in the moment or not. Right. Is that actor in the moment? Mm. And it's very clear from just one, you just remove one frame and you'll say he's in the moment or he's not in the moment. See, you know, there's a big I, distinction. I so I always, I always now encourage my, my directors and producers. I say, you know, instead of doing a photo shoot, if you can hmm. substitute a photo shoot with one of those frames and if it works right. for you, use that instead of doing, doing a doing separate a, photo a separate, shoot. Separate, because it's always more honest. Right. The but eyes, the eyes are always more honest. Would you say that about dubbing as well as against sync sound? When you're trying to recreate, but it's not the same thing. But would you would you use that analogy for sound as well? No, it's not the same thing because in dubbing you're also trying to be in the moment, right? Mm. Like you were on set, you're just right. trying to replicate it. Right. Because there was much made about over. No, know, I, I do agree with you. I do okay. agree with you. Sing sound is way more uh, honest than dubbing. It has to be, right? Right. It has right. to be. It's like real life is more honest than fiction. Mm. I I'm guess. saying that because there was so much made about Dil Chata being sing sound as against dub sound and uh, of course a whole lot of movies had been made like that before too but it, it just there's got a lot of the realism of of sing sound was lost to hindi cinema for a, for many decades hmm. millions of performances that have been dubbed for so many decades right. would have lost a certain a certain edge had hmm. they been in sing sound do you prefer sing sound there's no question about it yeah. right. i am an actor who's worked the majority of my career hmm. in Dubbing my films, right, right. and only in the last say 10, 10, 12 mm. years we've been we've been uh, spoiled with sing sound. I really feel bad for the actors who never had sing sound. Not that they knew <laughs> the difference because right. they never experienced right. it, but I still feel bad for them. Question from the audience. Actually, I'll start with saying that I really loved the film section 37. Oh, good, thank I you. It was fantastically done. Coming a year after the Me Too movement, uh, how relevant do you think that film was, and how do you think it changed the narrative? I don't think it has much of an impact of changing the narrative, no. I don't think that was ever the intention. So I don't feel disappointed or elated that it did either, it either did or it did not, because that was never the intention. Difficult to answer that question because that was never the intention. Uh, the, the timing was never the, uh, the intention. Neither was the purpose of making the film to change uh, uh, people's perspective on uh, sexual predators or people who behave in a extremely inappropriate way towards other people. It was just a great story. It was topical at the time, it still is. It's a film that I'm very proud to have in my fil filmography. I think it's something that uh, I wouldn't have missed out for anything. If I had to do it again, I'd do it again. I think it's one of those films which will age very well. It's like, it's like uh, for lack of a better film, it's like Andaz Apna Apna, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, it flopped when it released, but today it's considered one of the comedy classics of Hindi cinema. I'll give you another example, Shawshank Redemption. When it came out, it was a disaster at the box office. But today, if you look at Shawshank Redemption, I'm not, I'm not comparing section to Shawshank Redemption. No, don't mistake me. <laughs> so Shawshank, a film that today would be considered not only Hollywood, but world cinema. It would be considered anywhere in the top 10 films. Right. Of Increasingly all time, it number one. All time reason. great yeah. films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of of yeah. cinema, across yeah. whether it's Hindi, English, mm. Malayalam, whatever mm. cinema. What would you tell Tim Robbins, I mean, after the release of mm. Shawshank, Boss, Nehya, Nehya, Chaliya? 
डब्बा हुए एंड देन इट गोज ऑन टू इट ट्रैवल्स ऑन टू बिकम वन ऑफ द ग्रेट क्लासिक्स ऑफ 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 वर्ल्ड सिनेमा सो एवरी फिल्म हैज इट्स ओन हैज इट्स ओन जर्नी बट आई डेफिनेटली फील सेक्शन विल एज वेरी वेल आई थिंक फ्यूचर जनरेशन ऑफ सिनेमा लविंग पीपल विल डेफिनेटली फील दैट वन ऑफ द गुड 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 रियली गुड कॉर्टून ड्रामाज इट हैव कम आउट ऑफ इंडिया I know she mentioned me too but and this obviously was written much before the movement uh, do you see a greater parallel to that story with say shining ahuja case rather than the me too movement as it were was that was there a reference point given to you at any point it wasn't given to me okay but if uh, an incident or a particular case has triggered something in a writer where he starts writing a script mm. and then so maybe the maybe it was a trigger maybe shine shine shiny's case was a trigger mm. i don't know right i have not asked that question sure. it could be it could not be what difference does it make no it doesn't it's a great story it was it was a great story and i'm proud of it because you took that break as you as you said because you weren't getting the material you wanted did it ever occur to you that maybe you should build the material on your own from scratch uh, maybe not necessarily as a writer but as a producer who puts together a film for yourself the way most other movie stars do it's a very valid question there's no there's no there's no two ways about it i haven't done it i haven't done it so far it's not my skill set mm. it's not my skill set my skill set is very specific people can watch this interview and say oh but why why you act sounding so lazy and so you know you can easily do it and you know why haven't you done it and why are you making excuses it's not that it's just that i'm not, i i'm i've not been able to do it i've mm. not been able to do it as much as i'd like to do it right Uh, I have not been able to do it in, in the past, and I I'm not sure whether I'd be able to do it in the future. Like put a project together, hmm. I don't think. I don't. But do you so. follow cinema from a industry perspective? Do you watch films and theaters? You know the new releases, see what what people are putting out there. Do you do yeah, that? Yeah, often? Yeah, yeah. You go to the theaters and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I primarily watch at home. Okay. But I might wait for three months for it to come on uh, one of the platforms. But I'll watch it. You watch every new release? Not every, but I watch the big ones. Yeah. Like say Bala. Yeah, I haven't I mean, watched it yet, but when it comes on Amazon or the whatever. The week before that was a movie called Uj Ujra Chaman, but the same producers who made yeah. Section Three Seven Five. You haven't seen them? Not yet. Okay, so they came back to back, all right, and they were on premature balding, and like a lot was made of premature balding. I mean, you've you've had that situation in your life. Is it such a big deal? Like, is it does it really well affect confidence levels? And that's what the movies were about. It started happening to me at such a young age, mm. and because for me it was like a. like a pianist losing his fingers mm. it almost felt like that for me in those days i mean till it till you could really come to terms with it and then it st- starts bothering you less it's like you know waking up in the morning and saying reading the papers and saying oh sh- shit I, i can't read what is that you know mm. i need i need glasses right it would affect you right mm. what is happening to me my eyes are not working you right. know what i'm saying you know you might be a sportsman you might mm. be a cricketer or a footballer and suddenly you d- realize you need a, you need a knee surgery mm. so it's heartbreaking right. right you might lose a year or two years right. of your career right so as i said it's like a pianist losing his fingers so you the because the way you look mm. as an actor mm. is is very important right and especially this part i mean this is still you can cover it up or whatever mm. you can right at 19 20 it's devastating mm. it's it's heartbreaking and it's uh, it can uh, mentally like kill you it's like anything else it's like uh, like i said you know you need glasses someone needs glasses someone needs uh, something else someone needs something else you know, someone's got a well there are there are actors who are much much older and they would wear a toupee or something that's something that's something that you never did i mean when it's not even premature like so many actors who we know of who are, you yeah, know that's fine i mean everybody is uh, yeah sure you've got their own choices i mean it's up to you i mean what you want what you're comfortable with what your uh, you know what you're happy doing is what what you should do but did you at some point like think about it and did it really affect your self confidence in a certain way as an actor i think it did affect my self confidence a lot as as a as a young actor uh, more more than more than i'd like to admit actually so yeah definitely question you just mentioned to my saying that uh, you know you can't put a project together but you decided to present uh, the next film That's just a you know like a friendship thing. I've known Nitin for like 25 years, and we made this film. I I I brought the subject to him because I really loved it, and I it it wasn't getting made the subject, and it was just not finding the right uh, uh, you know people to come on board, and so I was very keen that it got made, and so but it's it's just like a friendship thing. It's not a it's not something that 
if you know what I'm saying, it's not a pro it's not a produced produce. It's I'm there as a as a as someone who's uh, been very keen that this film be made, and it was just not getting made. And was that the call taken when you when the casting was happening that you wanted to? No, no. I was I was I was offered the script as an actor, and I was very keen to do the role. Uh, it was it's a fabulously written script, a superbly written character for me. It was a difficult film to cast, and which is why it took a while to actually get made. Uh, some of it, some films are just difficult to cast. You know, it's uh, you can cast this guy, but this is difficult to cast. But if you cast this guy, then this is difficult to cast. So it's it's one of those tricky ones. No, like, what, were you always being? Uh, I was attached to it as an actor. Right. I really wanted to do it as an actor. The production credit is just something that is. Uh, you know, you have to be there, that kind of thing. Politics me join करने वाले क्या? नहीं. मुझे ऐसा ये आपके Twitter पे भी ऐसा रहता है थोड़ा सा. नहीं, I'm not on Twitter. It's a fake account. There was a question that you know, a lot of actors these days interact with their fans through social media. So, do you ever intend on doing so? I can't. I can't say in the future, but right now, no. I don't. Uh, from whatever I hear from my friends, colleagues, people, journalists, uh, producers, directors, whoever is on social media, even especially my my friends, I, I've never got a sense that it's something that is uh, constructive. It just, uh, for me, it doesn't serve any purpose. I, it, I'm not comfortable with it. To promote your film, maybe? To put the word out there? Well, I mean, if it was the only way I could promote right. my film, then of course I'd do it. Sure. But it's not. Right. Which is, of course, like one of the very few um, musicals per se that, or music driven films per se, that have been made in the industry. So, what went behind the making of that in terms of its music that the industry is not being able to, you know, create again in that way? You're talking about the quality of the music? The, the way the music was used in the film and the quality of course. But how is it used uh, differently from any other normal commercial Hindi film? Yeah, but um, so I think what I want to understand is how, why is it that musicals have not worked after, you know, something like that? So Would you call Tal more of a musical than say uh, any film, uh, Kalank. I mean, how is it more of a musical than any normal Hindi film? I mean, it had six, seven songs, and that's about it. I mean, I know Anil's character and Ash's character were into music; they were music people. But besides for that, I don't think you can classify it as a. I mean, those would be considered musicals like uh, La La Land, La La Land, or uh, what's that Nicole Kidman film recently? Like, so Moulin, Moulin Rouge and that, that those are, would be more like musical musicals. But in this cinema, most all films are like have music. So I don't know how you are looking at Tal as being different as in a, as a Hindi musical film. Okay. So I'm not sure what distinction you've created in your in your head. So I, it's difficult for me to answer that question. Did you answer the, understand the question? Well, maybe I think she means that musical as a genre we only had Bollywood musicals, right? And that we have much less of that now. Would you agree? The fact that even lip syncing is is going lip syncing songs is is on it, it's on its way out in a certain way. Of course, you have your Kalanks and Bajirao Mastani's of the world. Yeah. But so, like for instance, Section Three and Five, back in the day, or even Ittifaq that you did uh, recently. I mean, of course, it was a remake of a film yeah. that was considered like you know landmark or god. Yeah. There is no music yeah. in it. Yeah. You know, it's much easier to make those films now, or you see far more of them, where it's not about dancing. "Quote unquote around trees." I don't think the I don't think Hindi audiences have uh, their love for uh, uh, the combination of music and cinema has come down at all. In fact, I think it's very much as it always has been, where cinema and music have been they're very much associated with each other. You know, cinema and music. I mean, in fact, most you know real Hindi loving uh, uh, you know people always remember their movies through songs. You know, I remember that movie, but I remember that song in that movie. You know, so th that association in Hindi in Hindi cinema is is something that, in my in my opinion, is unbreakable. I think it'll always be. It's almost like a marriage. Uh, I don't think that that's going to change anytime soon. It's also easier to sell a film, like in terms of market of film, when that song just becomes like an earworm yeah. across radio stations and TV channels and yeah. online now. Yeah. Was that an apprehension you had with, say, a three seven five? But like, how do you promote this film? Because 
do you need a song at all was there something that came up in a discussion would you want to add a song just to make it because it was tc series producing their music company to that's start true, with that's true that's true that's but they have enough music to promote <laughs> they, do. Not, they don't have a dearth of music <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so no <laughs> they just different films different you know narrative sometimes don't require a song right. you know it would it would disturb a narrative the flow right yeah so it's a filmmaker's prerogative you know whether he wants to put music in his film or not but in a courtroom drama i would i would mm. i wouldn't advise it right but in the in the 90s when you started out it would be a an unheard of thing to do unheard right of, unheard the of the fact that you would do a, a movie of. without songs unheard of yeah that's been a big change yeah that's been that's been a change yeah but there are very few films that are not mm. without without any music at all i mean they might have less music like maybe one song or mm. two songs as opposed to five right but they still have music i don't think that's very difficult to remove hindi cinema music out of hindi cinema did lip syncing come naturally to you as an actor and dancing and dancing to the camera dancing no hmm? dancing no i mean you don't have to be a you know hrithik roshan or a govinda or a, a tiger or a prabhu deva to be able to dance as long as you enjoy it i think the audience is enjoy it as hmm. well you don't have to be a fab dancer you don't have to be saroj khan you know to to just enjoy a song and enjoy a dance you just it's just it's just really how much you enjoy it right yeah and once you enjoy it it comes across on screen have you been comfortable with dancing in situations which are not film situations like say a wedding for instance or a you know like a like a act like a pure dancing act on stage yes no i don't like stage okay i don't like stage you would never do it i mean i've done it before many times but i'm not i it, i don't enjoy it mm. i don't enjoy it i don't enjoy the stage i have stage fright so i don't enjoy the stage no even if i'm going up on stage to say introduce somebody else so you know present an award mm-hmm. i'm not comfortable doing it i don't like being on stage and i've heard many many uh, actors who have very comfortable in front of the camera but on stage no mm. and also the thing with stage is i always have a, a complaint against uh, stage is that my performance is not recorded hmm i don't like that you know it's not broadcast what's the point what's the point there's no camera you know hmm. it's not being recorded so if i i do a, if an actor does a performance on stage is those 500 people or 1000 people in the audience who are watching then it's gone hmm for that me it doesn't make any sense at all i don't like that and of course that's one aspect of stage and the second aspect is my fright of a stage fright and the, but then it, it's like it's like rock music and jazz music or you know different kinds of music it's just mm. different kinds of acting right you know, different kinds of uh, storytelling right my acting was is very much uh, more suited for the camera as mm. opposed to being 50 feet away from my audience If you don't cut to a close of me i you know i i i won't be as effective as i would be if you did cut to a close of me if you know what i'm trying to say i do i do so, so basically i mean you were one of the first leading men in in bollywood at least at the time for sure where less was more i know a lot of people do it now and a lot of them come from like you know say drama and drama backgrounds and then they've turned into people like say and irfan would just move very little of his face because the camera has to zoom in on him to get which is what you've been doing pretty much through your career it was a conscious choice that you made as an actor yes those choices are anyway never an actors they're always the director's choices mm. right where to put the camera right. which lens to use so those choices are never yours but even for the time that you started you were not the melodrama actor you were a little more restrained more real if i may put it that way that's a choice you made see when i said being in the moment right mm. being in the moment means many different things to many different people mm. right if a rat walked in mm. and ran from this side of the room to the other side mm. all of us would react in different ways mm. right right somebody might scream somebody might run out of the room somebody might jump on their chair somebody might just do this somebody might like oh god that's so everybody mm. will react differently mm. when you say you're in the moment it doesn't mean the way i am going to react in or respond in that moment is mm. the correct way you understand that's, your way. that's my way right. right right yours will be different hers will be different everybody's will be right. different when you narrow that gap like a rat running through the room is a is a is a big thing right mm. now when i narrow it down to a scene mm. then you narrow it down further as a character you narrow it down further with characterization mm. so then you keep narrowing 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 and then down you reach the moment then you reach the moment but even in that moment mm. it'll be very different from mm. actor to actor right so being in the moment is 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 the ideal mm. but even once you've reached the ideal there's no right or wrong true 
that's the thing with acting there's no right or wrong are there films you've seen lately that you wish that you know you offer that material uh, last 5 6 years that you really enjoyed when i watch most films i always feel that the person who's done the part has done it has done it better than i could do it sure so i never look at a part like that but did you like see the films like yeah, that's a really good film i mean it would have been nice to have been part of yeah all good films right? yeah, i don't feel that oh, like, shit like yeah, which ones? Was, uh, all of them all good films all like what all of which? them yeah all of them all of them and i'm sure there are many films of mine that other actors have wished that those films had come sure. to them that's that's and there were scripts that you probably said no to when you saw and the films turned out to be pretty good yeah were there those two yeah are there any instances you can remember i was supposed to do pariniti hmm. uh parinita parinita that's right Uh, Saif's role, hmm. and I didn't for some reason. I don't know why. And after the film release, I called up with uh, Vinod, and I said, you know, I really enjoyed the film, and I wish I had done it. And yeah, you bastard, you such a dick, and you're this and you're that. <laughs> and I was like, fine. <laughs> so yeah, there have been films which uh, I have not done, and I, I, I wish at that time that I was, you know, thinking differently. I mean, but there are various, you know, at times. I, you, you could be in a bad mood when you hear a script. Right. You know, you don't know. I mean, there's so right. many things that could influence your decision. So yeah sometimes things slip out of your hands sometimes things fall into your lap which you never expected like for example uh, like an out and out negative role in a film called Hamraz hmm. uh, which was again directed by right. Abbas Mastan which i believe like five or six major leading actors who approached for that role had said no but when i heard it i loved it and uh, i i i, t- I told uh, Uh, Abbas Mustan I said it may be a negative role and that was the one of the I think the first that I have negative role right. that I did but I was like that guy is the most entertaining part uh, the most entertaining mm. part of the film mm. you know I, I I really don't know why pe- uh, other actors have said no but I I really want to do it I really think I I could do something good with it so it happens all the time it happens all the time and you've seen anything good the uh, indian series like did there anything you liked watching <sighs> I liked the first season of Sacred Games. Right. Uh, I didn't like the second. I liked uh, Family Man. Hmm. I liked uh, Delhi Crime. Right. What's the Zoya one? Made in Made in Heaven. Heaven. Yeah. Well, I didn't complete the whole season, but I liked it. Right. I enjoyed it. Right. It has to be like a proper fanzine question. I'm sorry. You have like a whole half a nation of female followers, and they and you're I think the only actor I know in show business who talks about the fact. that he's never going to get married i know there's there's much made of salman khan or whatever but you actually have a point of view that you want to live alone these are your words take us through this like what's where does it come from where does it come from in the sense of your take on the institution itself and second uh, be that definitive about exactly how you want to live a life to be sure that you want to live alone forever well as i said you know there's so many things that one says you know at different points in one's life which might not necessarily always be true for mm. the for 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 the, you know the, the rest of my life so i may have said things in the past which i might disagree with now i might contradict i would very much uh, prefer to live uh, my life without someone by my side all the time mm. i find that suffocating mm. that's the only reason do you go There's on no other reason yeah, all the time okay but to commit to a lifetime mm. of of togetherness right uh is 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 virtually impossible for me so what does that mean like serially monogamous is that what what it would mean no it means knowing oneself reasonably well enough not to ruin somebody else's life hmm. right. okay my last question to you were you mentally exhausted with this interview were you no i enjoyed exhausted? it i enjoyed it i really i didn't feel i didn't feel i didn't feel it at all thank you so much akshay this my was pleasure. this is lovely thank you thank so much you. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.